Good morning, good morning. How is everyone? So glad you can come and join us here this morning. Welcome to everybody viewing us by live stream. We're so glad you can tune in with us today. We're so happy that you can be here. Happy Father's Day, everyone. Happy Father's Day to all the men in the house. We honor you today as we have fathers and grandfathers and uncles and brothers and coaches and leaders and volunteers and mentors. We honor you, those who stand in the office of leading and influencing our next generation to do amazing things. And where they go, they have gone because you have imparted that into them and shared with them all your wisdom and knowledge. So we say thank you and we honor you today. I also want to take the time to share a little bit with you um, that we also recognize that Father's Day isn't always the best day for everyone. Um, that it's uh, filled with heartache and there's some sorrow and some sadness and that um, it's a difficult day and we recognize that. And I can, if I can just share with you a couple minutes from my own personal experience, um, my father passed away three years ago this June, this past June. And I remember the very first Father's Day that came about after he had passed away. Um, throughout my childhood and all of my life, my father was very ill with mental illness. And so there was a lot uh, lacking in our relationship, let's just say. And so there was a, a huge father hole uh, wound there. So um, when he passed away and I had my first Father's Day that came after he passed away, um, there was a lot of grief for me at that moment and that t time and that day because there was a, a finality there that just happened for me, that the dream that I had and the hope that I had and possibly having that relationship with my father uh, someday passed away with him. I had to put that to rest and I was not going to be able to experience that relationship with him. And as I began to just sit and just talk with God and share with him my heart and what I was going through, he began to share with me. He's like, can I share with you my perspective? Because in his final days, my father passed away from cancer. And in his final days, the Lord was so gracious to me in his goodness and in his mercy. And the last month before my father passed away, I got the opportunity to take care of him, to honor him in that way. How I many you know the Lord, the Bible says to honor your father and mother. It doesn't give conditions. It just says you honor them. You obey God and he'll show you what to do and how to do it. I honored my father and I took care of him. And the Lord just blessed me with just moments I will cherish forever of times I got to talk with my dad and share with my dad and begin to have a glimmer of what it was like to get to know this man who is in now in his right mind and I could share with and talk with him. And the Lord said to me, as the next Father's Day came about, I experienced hope because the Lord was speaking to me, this doesn't end here because my father accepted the Lord as his savior two weeks before he passed away. So I get to spend eternity with God and with my father, getting to know for all of eternity the man that my father is becoming in the presence of God. Amen. So I want to encourage you that today, as we celebrate our earthly fathers, we celebrate our fathers here, that we first and foremost remember and we celebrate our Heavenly Father, our Abba Father. And by his good and perfect design, he made family. He made mothers and fathers. And the greatest gift that a father gives to their children is he speaks forth identity. He tells them who they are. It's the greatest gift we give as fathers to our children. And the greatest gift in God's design that mothers give to their children is the capacity to love and love well, and be able to love, and love many, and nurture, and that emotional care that we get from our mothers, and then the identity that our fathers, our fathers speak forth over us. And it's so important that the enemy would set it as though they are in competition with one another, and that is not God's design. God says that they have different roles. One is not more important than the other, but when one is missing, you will go a lifetime seeking and searching. 
for, to fill the void and the emptiness in your heart if you're missing the father or you're missing the mother. But I want to encourage you this morning that your heavenly father, it's the image that he created in his perfect design and family, mother, father, and children. A perfect reflection of who he is as he speaks to us identity and he nurtures over us in love. So I want to encourage you that today, as we remember our fathers, that we stop and we remember to and we give thanks in your personal time to remember God, your Abba Father. And that even though you might be missing the presence of your father, or maybe your father is here, and there's the brokenness in relationship that your Abba Father is there, and he is perfect, and in him there is no lack. There is no rejection. You are not a hostage of shame, but your identity is a child of God. Amen? Amen. So this morning, we had some fun for Father's Day, and we made a video for our family that we wanted to share with you today. <sighs> I just can't wait till Father's Day. So, this is a little bit closer to what it's really like. <laughs> Honey, can you please get me a tea? As you wish, my love. Ooh, and while you're wrapped, do you mind getting me an apple cider and a large piece of apple pie? Don't skim out. Thanks. Apple cider, large apple pie, got it. Oh, and a ginger ale with just a splash of lemon. And how much ice would you like in that, Tafara? Five cubes. No Five more cubes. And a bowl of loose chocolate ice cream, lots of buttercup and chocolate. Make sure it's in my pink ice cream bowl. Lots of buttercups. Yeah, pink so bowl. Really okay. So, Dad, so tomorrow, for like my weekend plans. So, can we go get Savannah and then we go to the mall for a couple of hours and then Savannah's gonna come back and sleep over at our house. But then the next day when we drive Savannah home, can you drop me off at Gracie's house? I'm gonna stay the night there. And then the next morning, the only problem is I work at 8, so can you get me from her house at 7.30? And, mm, cause like I need money. Sure, Isabel. He said, yeah, so we're good. So, while I'm up, would anyone else like anything? Gotcha. <laughs> you girls are awesome. Rolly, would you help me with the pulpit? <laughs> As I wish, right? As I wish. Even on Father's Day, he is serving. Amen. So... We, again, like I said, we had some fun. We had our family video. We had some fun, and we reached out to some families in Windsor Christian Fellowship, and we asked them to tell us about their fathers and what their fathers mean to them. So we would like to share with you a video from uh, the Badamosi family, and they're sharing about what their father means to them. Hey. 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 Yo, guys, isn't this daddy's song? Yeah, I think so, right? Right? Yeah, I think right? So, in honor of Father's Day, hmm, when we think of Daddy, what comes to mind? Eh? Mm. Mm. Hi, everyone. We're, We're the children, the children of the Ramachi family. family. Firstly, we would like to say thank you for giving us the opportunity to highlight the man that we have the privilege of calling Daddy in honor of Father's Day. Daddy is a pillar of strength, dedication, education, and insight for us in our family. He is the first man we've got to know, and he brought us up in the ways of the Lord, always pointing us towards Abba, Father. 
Daddy oozes godly wisdom beyond his years, a great teacher with so many life lessons that make up who we are today. And for that, we are incredibly grateful and thank God. He is the best of the best, the cream of the crop. May God continue to bless you and perfect everything that concerns you. You shall continue to go from strength to strength and from glory to glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank, thank you, Daddy. We love you tremendously. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. I love that. So, a few of the characteristics of their father and the attributes of their father that they talked about were strength, wisdom, devotion, and uprightness of character. And essentially, in a word, what the father did for his children is speak to them identity and who he was and poured into them and imparted into them who they need to be in their identity. And these attributes needed to be part of who they are in their identity. And the Father does that for us as well as he calls us to be imitators of Christ, to become more like him as he is working in our lives and transforming us and taking us from glory to glory. I want to read to you 2 Corinthians 3.18. And it's out of the Passion Translation. I'm loving the Passion, Passion Translation lately. It's really awesome. If you haven't read it before, I encourage you to dive right into the word in that translation. It's really amazing. It says in 2 Corinthians 3.18, We can all draw close to him with the veil removed from our faces. And with no veil, we all become like mirrors who are brightly, who brightly reflect the glory of the Lord Jesus. We are being transfigured into his very image. As we move from one brighter level of glory to another. And this glorious transfiguration comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. So we can see here from that scripture, because of Jesus, there is no veil. There's no barrier. We can come before him as our personal Lord and Savior. We can come into his presence and he transforms us and he actually transfigures us from glory into greater glory as we submit and we surrender our lives to him. And he causes us to become more like him, speaking his identity and who we are in him as he calls us his children and he is our father. So I want to share with you another video. The Navarro and Caltica family sent us videos as they shared with us what their daddy means to them. My dad is a good dad because he builds stuff for us and he loves me. And he snuggles with me and he wrestles with me. He's a very special dad to me because he lets me do his hair and let me eat his chips. He's a really great dad, and I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him, because he always annoys me. <laughs> That's awesome. So Roly is right here. He is the daddy of Gabrielle. And Gio. And they said of their daddy, he loves me and he builds me stuff. And he cuddles with me and he wrestles with me. How many know that's good daddy? And I want to read to you in Luke 6, 46 to 49. What good does it do for you to say, I am your Lord and master. If what I teach you, you do not put into practice. Let me describe the one who truly follows me and does what I say. He is like a man who chooses the right place to build a house and then lays a deep and secure foundation. When the storms and floods rage against that house, it continues to stand and unshaken through the tempest, for it has been wisely built on the right foundation. But the one who has heard my teaching and does not obey, it is like a man who builds a house without laying any foundation whatsoever. When the storms and floods rage against that house, 
it will immediately collapse and become a total loss. Which of these two builders will you be? I believe that Roly has chosen a very wise place to build his house. And that place is in the hearts of his children. And the firm foundation that we put into our children is the word of God. And the love and the care and the tenderness. Gabriella doesn't know it yet, but when her father is building the foundation into their lives, when life happens as it will happen for them as they grow, the foundation that their father built for them as he comforted them and sheltered them, played with them, loved them, and built them stuff and made them feel safe, when the storms come and the rage, the flood rages and the tempest blows, they will not be moved. They will stand. And we need to understand that sometimes as parents, we can look at our children and we watch the decisions that we make, they make. And sometimes, well, a lot of the times, it's not the decision that we would make. And we wish that they would listen to us a little more. But we need to know and we need to believe and understand that we train up our children in the way that they should go. And when they're old, we trust the Lord that they will not depart from it. So as we sow seed into them and we sow it into the right place, into their heart, that seed grows and it will become what it needs to become because the word of God will not return void. All the words sent out over them will go out and it will accomplish what it's sent out to do in Jesus' name. And in that way, all you fathers, you have received an inheritance from the Lord. What you do with that inheritance as you sow into your children then becomes a legacy. That legacy is what you give to them that they will take and it will become their inheritance. And what they do with it and they give out becomes a legacy. So you receive your inheritance, but you will be remembered for your legacy, what you've given to them. So we need to remember that we need to be giving out as parents the legacy that we want as we have received the inheritance from our Heavenly Father. We give out legacy to our children so that they can stand in the midst of the storm and when the floods rage and when the tempest might blow. The seed has been sown in a wise place in their heart. Amen? I want to also read to you from Matthew 7. Verse 9 to 11. It says, Do you know of any parent who would give his hungry child who asked for food a plate of rocks instead? Or when I asked for a piece of fish, what parent would offer his child a snake instead? If you, imperfect as you are, know how to lovingly care for your children and give them what's best, how much more ready is your Heavenly Father to give you wonderful gifts to those who ask them? How many know in that video, Kensley said, My daddy lets me eat his chips. He, I'm sure he gladly gives them over. I'm sure she's really glad that he doesn't give her a plate of rocks and snakes too. That when she asks for it, he gives her his chips. And those are little things, but those are the things that children remember. And Cain, when he says he wouldn't be here without his dad, it's not just life. It's the seed that's being sown as he's growing into the young man of God that he will become and his dad sowing seed into him and being there for him as well as not just being able to impart life to him. And then we have uh, Kira who says, my dad annoys me. Said every teenage girl, and we have four. Because her heavenly father, when our dad, most of the time, is trying to get your attention. Your attention because he wants to pour out love over you, because he wants to speak to you, because he wants to share something with you. And it's an attention that's sought because he does not want something from you that will benefit him. He wants to, you to have the benefit. So instead of the young man that will approach you in life and wanting only something for himself and seeking out your attention, but only wanting to woo you only for himself so that he can get the benefit for himself, our Heavenly Father so often daily seeks us out for our attention. 
and asks us, would you spend time with me? Would you pray with me? Would you talk to me? And how often have we considered it's just, oh, it's an obligation. It's an annoyance. I got to go. Like, I got to do these things. When your heavenly father is seeking you out because he loves you, because he wants to pour into you, because he wants to show you how much he loves you and impart identity to you and let you know how much he loves and cares for you. Amen? I want to share with you another video. And this is from the Burton family and what they have to say about their daddy. Because he loved me always. And for no reason, he loves me. And he snips branches to get the trees haircuts. What else? Why, why else is daddy so special? Um, my brain only thinks about those ones. Your brain only thinks about those things? Okay. That was so awesome. I love it. <laughs> so good. So in case you missed it, Mr. Jarrett Burton is a great landscaper. He is awesome at cutting those bushes and trimming the hedges back. So he does a really good job. And for his little daughter, Lois, he just loves me. He loves me for no reason. Isn't that what we want to say about our Lord Jesus? And the message that we want to give to our children as we are parenting them is that they just love me. They just love me for no reason. Unconditional love. I want to read from you a scripture in John 15, 1 to 2. And it says, I am the true sprouting vine. And the father who tends the vine, or the farmer who tends the vine is my father. He cares for the branches connected to me by lifting and propping up the fruitfulness and branches and pruning every fruitful branch to yield a greater harvest. So I'm sure there's times in a father's life where there has to be some pruning, some life lessons taught that aren't necessarily the easiest to take and they're painful at times. But it's so important. So important in those times, if I can encourage you fathers, that in those times when you're imparting a life lesson, and sometimes it's hurting and it's painful, that the message that they leave most importantly with is that my daddy loves me. I might have screwed up, might have made a mistake, and boy, I got to walk out these consequences. And they're really good when they're natural consequences because those are the best teachers, the natural consequences if we can step back and let God do his thing. And not try to control our children in the decisions and choices they make. We have to let them make some choices on their own. And let those consequences happen as they do. But then we step in and let them know how much we love them. No matter what. And that's what our Heavenly Father does for us. No matter what, He loves us. But because He loves us, He won't leave us that way. And we have to train up our children and show them the way that's right. So that when we stand before God... We can say to the Lord, I have taught them, Lord. I have showed them the way. And I know and trust you that when they're old, they won't depart from it. And they will stand. And they need to know that you will make mistakes as parents. We all will. We all have. But we need to make sure that when we do make mistakes and when they make a mistake, that they can go to their Savior, Jesus Christ. Because many times we can't rescue them and we cannot be their Savior. It's Jesus who is their Savior. Amen? So I want to call Matthew Chowdy and Desmond Griffiths to come and join me on the stage. They are so gracious to come and share their hearts with you. Matthew is a val valuable member of our production team, and he is the wonderful young man who put together some of these videos and the multimedia and all that stuff. And Desmond is a valued member of our congregation and an amazing father and lovely husband 
of Kim Griffiths, who is our creative director here at Windsor Christian Fellowship. So I've asked them to share their heart. Matthew is a new daddy, and Desmond has three beautiful daughters that he has raised, and two of them have married. Oh, well, one married in two, what, in two weeks? Two weeks. Two weeks is getting married. So I just want them to share their hearts with you this morning. Hey, church, what's going on? How are you guys doing? Happy Father's Day to y'all. Thank you. Um, so as a new dad, uh, there's a lot of learning <laughs> that takes place. Um, one of those things being uh, there's no information out there. I'm pretty sure if you, like, Google, what did you do as a dad? It just says, good luck, buddy. <laughs> uh, like, you think normally in a, a society, you go, oh, I go to school, you know, I learn these things, I take this degree, and then I become, and I get this title of this said degree. That doesn't happen for fathers. You just, you kind of, there's a woman and she has a baby and then boom, you're in adulthood and you're into fatherhood. There's, there's no information packet or, or uh, questionnaires to fill out. It's just, you're there, you're in. Um, so that leads to a lot of Google searches and uh, a lot of phone calls to mom and dad and on both sides of the family and uh, thankful for them. And uh, happy Father's Day, dad, I love you. Thanks for getting me this far in life. Look at him on stage. <laughs> Um, but anyway, I love you, Dad. Um, kids are so funny. Um, they're they're just they're kind of like the opposite sometimes of what you think is supposed to happen. And then they're like, "Whoa, where did that come from?" And I, I mean, I remember a couple times I was like trying to outsmart them. And uh, one of them was when he was a uh, baby, like really baby. And he was, um, yeah, that's the cutie, the Mr. Levi. <laughs> uh, he was, uh, I was like, you know what, we need to get more sleep. Let's do this. I'm going to, I'll just push his bedtime till later. Therefore, he'll still have to sleep 10 hours or 12 hours or whatever it is, but we get to sleep in in the morning instead. That'll work. Nope. Okay, so what happens is he just wakes up at the same time, and except you get a crankier baby for the next day. Doesn't work. It's, it's not fun at all. Don't do that. Don't recommend it. <laughs> um, another thing is if, you, if your kid's crying, and you tell them, stop crying. It doesn't work either. Uh, not that I've tried it, but I've heard that it doesn't work. Just, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, uh, with all these random things with kids, I, I think it's funny that um, in Matthew 18, uh, there's, I don't know if you know the story, but the disciples are arguing, like, who's going to be the greatest in the kingdom? It's me. And they're like, no, it's me. And no, whatever. And they go, Jesus, who will be the greatest in the kingdom? And Jesus, as they're arguing, goes, and goes, hey, hey. And he calls over a child, and he goes, and waits for them and goes, yeah, this, he's going to be the greatest in the kingdom. And they're like, what? And that's, that's kind of weird. And I think almost Jesus is playing a practical joke because kids are like, they're not what you think they're going to be. They're different and they make you think things differently. And, and I think that Jesus is like that kind of guy. He just likes to flip the script and you're like, whoa, did not see you going there. Okay, cool. Um, but the cool thing is I, when I was thinking about that verse and I was thinking about me as a father and when I had dreams and, and thoughts of who I was going to be as a dad when I was younger, I was like, okay, I'm going to be this dad that's, that's cool. I'm going to be real cool. I'm going I'm to get some muscles. I'm going to get some solid muscles. And then I'm going to get some tattoos on them muscles, but not too much tattoos because I don't want my kids' friends to be scared of me, you know, just enough for them to be like, well, your dad's cool. And then maybe drive a motorcycle, you know, and then be all wise. Like, hey, your dad knows everything. You're like, yeah, he does. I don't know. I don't get it. And then, do you know those kind of dads? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if those dads exist. But anyway, um, that's who I thought, okay, that's, that's the dad I want to be. But then when I see this verse and I see these disciples arguing about who's going to be the greatest in the kingdom, who's going to be the greatest dad, I, I see the child when Jesus calls him over, and he's running to Jesus. Jesus says, you have to be humble like him, and you enter the kingdom. Uh, I just go, whoa, I could just see Levi, my son, running to me with his little, little grin, <laughs> his little body, and just his both arms coming to hug me wherever I am, and I just sit there and I embrace him, and I just, I can't help but think that's how God sees me when I look at my uh, life. He looks to me as if I'm, I'm his child, and I'm running to him, Dad, I love you, and here I am, and, and he just embraces me and loves me. Um, and the crazy thing is, is you know, I, I, all those things I wanted to be, 
I don't think I'll ever measure up. I don't think I'll ever be strong enough to protect my family from everything. I don't think I'll be wise enough to know everything to, to help my family get along with anything I need to finish in life. But I do know that God knows. And if I, if I know his heart and I can hear him, then I can solve the answers that are in front of me. And if I can know those things, then I can help my son become a better father when he is one day. Because one thing I've learned when I was a new dad is that to become a better father, I have to become a better son. I have to become a better child of God. It's the only way this is going to work. And he has hopes and dreams for my son. He has plans and visions for my son. The best thing I can do as a father is help guide him with the thoughts of God and the wisdom of God to move forward in his life so he can have a greater life than I have ever have. And he can be way more successful than I could ever be because that's the hope, I think, for most parents is to watch their kids and, and be greater than what they've put the platform up for them at. at. Um, anyway, that's what I've learned to be a new dad is to, to be a better dad is to be a better son. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. That was so good. That's awesome. And as I said, first service, you, you're a great dad. You're a great father. Thank you very much. <laughs> you know, one of the things I, I've had to, to learn fairly early is that our children really are not ours. You know, they're on loan to us. God calls us to steward them. And if you take that approach, you realize the awesome responsibility you have um, as a father to pour into their lives and to, and to steward their relationships as they develop. Uh, to have a relationship with the Father, just like you steward other relationships, like you steward your finances. And, um, you know, God designed us to live in community. And, and the wonderful thing about the church, you know, this church, uh, the relationships we have, there's so many people that have poured into our kids' lives. I feel like we've raised them as a community uh, here. You know, I can't take the credit, um, you know, for all the wonderful things that, uh, that, that's been put into their lives. It's, it's from all of you. Um, but my name is Des, as Pastor Mary said, and, and I've had the awesome privilege of um, being the father of three beautiful, uh, intelligent, caring, and generous uh, ladies, uh, Nathana, Kayla, and Jade. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know. I think they've taught me as much as I, I teach and pour into them. Um, one of the things... I think mainly very, very early learning that my relationship or my role as a father is to train them up in the way they should go, to provide for them, to protect them, those three things, and to do those three things uh, in transparency and with unconditional love. And when it comes to training them up in the way they should go, yes, it's, it's, it's modeling the appropriate behavior, it's, it's instructing them, it's, it's correcting them, as Pastor Mary said. But it's also making sure, and she, she touched on this, that they, they understand who they are. They understand that they are loved. They understand their identity in Christ. You know, that they're confident in who they are. That they know from their father that they are loved. Because I don't want the first time they hear that they are loved to be from Romeo <laughs> when he comes later. I want that to be confirmation. When he says it, I want it to be like, yeah. Uh, this is not the first time I'm hearing that. I know that. I know who I am. It's, it's, it's incredibly important. And for that reason, for, for our girls, they didn't date till very late in life because we wanted them to develop a, a sure foundation and identity and confidence in who they were before other influences started to come. But training them up and then providing for them, providing for their physical needs or spiritual needs or emotional needs, just working hard and making sure that they want for nothing, that they, they have everything that, that, they, that they want and need, you know, as a father. And then finally, you know, protecting them, you know, making sure no harm comes to them, you know, physically or emotionally. And, you know, in my, in my house, boys was a bad word. <laughs> you know, I've got these, these three beauties. I don't want any guys coming around. You know, so uh, we would joke that I keep a baseball bat, you know, be, uh, behind the door, you know, for these situations when these guys would come, uh, come by. But, but you protect them. And, as they, and, and you do this in transparency. You know, you're not perfect. And you don't want them to see you as perfect. You know, you want to be vulnerable uh, with them, to understand that you make mistakes, you know, to, to be humble and to admit when you're wrong and you... And you want them to have that relationship with you as well because you're understanding that the whole purpose of the family is to bring about the character and the nature of God. And their interactions with you 
are going to set up their interactions with the Father. And so you want them to be seeing you as approachable, and you want them to understand that you see them, that you're attentive to them, that you know them, you know them deeply, and speak into those deep areas of their lives. So that transparency and that unconditional love is important. You know, and then over time, it starts to transition, you know. Um, it, they showed, I don't know if they showed the, the baby pictures of them or the, the little ones, but that there, that's how every father sees their kids, no matter how old they get, okay? So, so that's how I see them, you know, but then they transition to those, those three, three beautiful women that were on the steps, and, and, and it starts to change, and it's like, okay, you used to give them advice, and they would take it, and they would run with it. Well, you know, I, I ran into the situation with my oldest daughter where she was asking me for advice to do something, and it, and it became very clear after I gave this wonderful advice that, um, and I don't know that she came out and actually said it, but the, but the sentiment was there. I left with the understanding that she was going to take what I said into advisement. It would form part of her consideration as she made her decision. <laughs> that it wasn't that she was just going to do what I told her to do. And for me, that was kind of a, oh, oh okay. Um, th th I have to adjust. All right, so my role is more to advise, and, and the training's already done, right? And now you're just advising and shepherding more from the periphery and, and not into to the heavy details. And, and then the protecting, you know, even that changes, you know, um, or the, the providing and the protecting, because now, now you're looking at these men that are coming into their lives, and you want to know <laughs> that they see your daughters the way you've seen them and that they know them as precious and worthy, and that they will love them the way you have your whole life. You want that for them, and you've raised them to choose well. And so as they transition in the case of, you know, Kayla's not um, married yet or at that stage, but Jade is two weeks from being married, Nathan is already married. But as I look at their spouses, I see that in them. I see the, the godly nature, the godly character in them. I see that they've chosen well. And nothing gives a father more peace than knowing that, that that person that's in their life is going to provide for them and protect them the way that you have. And so it's a, it's a wonderful feeling. But, but I'm looking forward to the next, the next stages, you know, as we grow. Um, I think my middle daughter, Kayla, and I really developed a special relationship as we walk together, and she makes her career choices. But, but it's now adult children that you're raising. It's not the little ones anymore. And um, I'm, I'm learning to accept that role a, as advisor and, uh, and move along with it. Thank you so much. Happy Father's Day to you both. Thank you. Thank you for sharing from your heart today. I appreciate that so much. I am very parched. Where is my tea? <laughs> there it is. There's my tea. Hi, beautiful. Hello, my love. Thank you so much for it's my hot. tea. Careful, it's hot. We like tea. Every morning, Pastor RJ serves me my tea. Every morning. And some nights. And some nights. And some in the middle of the day, in the afternoon. <laughs> so, I want to share with you a scripture, and it's Ephesians 5, 25 to 30. And it says, And to the husbands, you are to demonstrate love for your wives with the same tender devotion that Christ demonstrated to us, his bride. For he died for us, sacrificing himself to make us holy and pure, cleansing us through the showering of the pure water of the word. All that he does in us is designed to make us a mature church for his pleasure until we become a source of praise to him, glorious and radiant, beautiful and holy without fault or flaw. Husbands have the obligation of loving and caring for their wives the same way they love and care for their own bodies. For to love your wife is to love your own self. No one abuses his own body, but pampers it, serving it and satisfying its own need, its needs. 
That's exactly what Christ does for his church. He serves and satisfies us as members of his body. RJ, I want to say to you that the best leaders are the ones who know how to serve. Thank you for how you love and serve me and our daughters. Thank you for the love that you lavish upon us and the great care that you extend to us with open arms and for your great strength that shields us and protects us in our home. You are the head and the shepherd of our home. And because of your great love to us, we lovingly know that you make decisions that are for our good and not for your benefit only, but for the family's good. And we honor you today and we thank you that because of your love, you actually cause us to shine so brightly and become so beautiful because of your great love on us. Thank you for how you serve us. I love you. I love you. I should have paid her more. <laughs> I want to read Luke. 22, 25 to 27. No, we're not done. <laughs> Jesus interrupted their argument saying, the kings and men of authority in this world rule oppressively over their subjects, claiming that they do for it, for the good of the people. But they are obsessed with how others see them. But this is not your calling. You will lead by a different model. The greatest one among you will, lead, will live as one called to serve others without honor. The greatest honor and authority is reserved for the one who has a servant's heart. The leaders who are served are more important in your eyes, but in the kingdom, it is the servants who lead. Am I not here with you as the one who serves you? And this is Jesus speaking. Church, I just want to encourage you and let you know that Pastor RJ is a man after running after God's own heart and seeking him on your behalf. And in the decisions that he's made and what he has had to do, he does so with fear and trembling for the Lord, making the decisions that are right for the house and not for his benefit. And because of the grandfather... Pastor Rick and the grandmother of the house who have laid seed in a very good place in Pastor RJ's heart. That seed has grown. And even when the storms have come, and they will come, and the flood rages, and the tempest might blow, he will not fall. He will stand strong because he leans on the tower who is his God, who will hold him up in his strength. And he makes decisions that are good for the house. So I want to encourage you today that you can put your trust as you pray for the shepherd of the house. As he is fathering this house and goes before you with the Lord. Thank you, RJ. And our prayer for you is that God would grant you divine health. That he would enable you with supernatural strength to carry the mantle. To walk before him in fear and trembling with uprightness of character that will never leave as you seek him and seek to do what's right, even when the hard decisions need to be made. Because let's be honest, if it was easy, everybody would do it. But it's not. And the Lord has chosen you and set you in this place. And I know that the Lord is for you and no one can be against you. And we honor you today as you stand where God has placed you for such a time as this. I do love my wife. Would you stand with us as we receive communion this morning and we honor our Abba Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Lord Jesus, our Heavenly Father, we choose to remember you today on Father's Day. 
our Abba Father. And Lord, I lift up in prayer those within the sound of my voice this morning who may be struggling, Lord, in their heart with pain and with sorrow. Perhaps, Lord, they don't know who they are. They have not been spoken into identity. Perhaps they don't know, Lord God, how unconditionally loved and precious and special they are. Lord Jesus, I pray for your ministering spirit, for your love to go forth and penetrate their heart and speak to them in that gentle whisper, that comforting, tender voice. Lord, that your hands, as you open them up, have been so tender in their touch and loving in their embrace. I thank you, Lord God, that you would hold out your arms and embrace your children. As we look to you and we give honor to you and we remember our Abba Father, perfect and holy are you. In you there is no lack and every good and perfect gift comes from the Father above. We thank you, Lord, for every good and perfect gift. And we thank you, Father God, that no matter what will happen to us, it does not take you by surprise. And you know the end from the beginning. You are the end from the beginning. You're the Alpha, the Omega. And your plan is that you have a good future for us, Lord God. I thank you, Father, that we would let you write our story that we would surrender to you, that we would yield to you, Lord God. I thank you that we lift you up in honor today and that we would lean on you and trust in you, put our hope in you, even in our brokenness, Lord, I thank you that we can cry out to you and we can trust you, that you are the good, good Father. And every heart will be mended every place that's broken will be bound up because of your son Jesus who has paid the price and made a way that there is no veil there's no wall that we can come to the father in personal relationship and receive his love in Jesus name and as we have the cup in our hand representing the blood of Jesus that was spilled for us on the cross let's look to the Father today Father I thank you that your heart is for people and I get a sense right now that there's many people that are discouraged, that they're in the struggle right now, and sometimes they're feeling very overwhelmed. But Lord, I ask that right now, you're gonna minister life to their hearts. You're gonna strengthen them and encourage them by your word and by your power. And we can look to you, God, our Father, the one who makes a way, the one who sustains us no matter what we face each day. And I thank you for the courage to stand up for what is right in the day and hour that we live in. And that hearts are being encouraged and men are not fainting, but they're taking up the mantle that you placed upon their life. And our lives are instruments of righteousness and the power of God is being revealed through us to touch a generation in Jesus' name. So while you're still standing with us, you know, the Bible talks in Luke chapter 7 about one of the accounts of the al alabaster box, and I'm just going to be a, just a brief minute. And we know there was Mary at Bethany, and she poured out the perfume on Jesus' feet. That's Lazarus' sister. But there's another account of another woman who came and she, she took her inheritance, it seems, 
It took maybe even a part of her dowry, and she anointed the feet of Jesus with her tears and with the perfume. And you know, some of the religious leaders got upset and said, oh, that money could have been sold and given to the poor. I mean, one scholar said it might have been up to $50,000 worth of perfume. But the point that I think most people miss is those women loved Jesus so much that they were willing to give him their best, even at great personal cost. And once a year, we ask everyone to pray and ask the Holy Spirit, and we take up a free will offering. It's called our Abaday offering. A lot of times we use it for capital campaigns and different things that we need to do around the church that are extra and above beyond operations. But really, once a year, we like to take up a special offering and we ask people, give your best to God. Let's, let's sow into the kingdom today. And you know, I prayed with my children this morning. We all took our offerings and we put them together. And we said, God, I thank you that you've given us seed to sow. And I thank God every day that people that desire to give, God will give them more seed to sow. And as everyone sows together, we reap a great harvest in the world. So I'm gonna pray and, you know, due to some of the things, we take up offerings a little bit differently now. I know a lot of you donate online and through e-transfer and push pay. But we do have buckets that'll be at the doors on the way out if you'd like to donate in cash or, or in check. Or at the information center, there's some machines. So Father, I thank you that as men and women have been listening to the guiding of the Holy Spirit, and you've been directing them. Lord, I thank you for the faithfulness of Windsor Christian Fellowship and the tithes. And Lord, you truly do rebuke the devourer from them and you make a way for them and sustain them. And there's a hedge up on every side because we have a covenant with you. But Lord, I thank you that even in the offerings, we start getting into multiplication of seed and it's gonna go into good ground. And Lord, we're gonna see souls saved and lives changed. We're gonna see people touched. As we continue, Lord, in faith and in joy, I thank you that there's an open heaven over, over our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you all for coming to worship with us today. Some of you here in person and some of you are streaming us. God bless you all. Have a very happy Father's happy Day. Happy Father's Day to you all. And we'll see you Enjoy next time. Enjoy the day.